So sure enough, I get the blindfold on and he takes me to some grassy area. I have no idea where it was. He makes me run blindly through this area and follow his voice. Now, it, it, it's an interesting exercise to run blindly when you can't see where you're going. <laughs> this crazy motherfucker telling you, hey, follow my voice. Over here, Patrick, over here. Is that as fast as you can run? But you don't want to run as fast as you can because you feel like you're going to run into a wall or run into a lake or something like that. But then you have to actually let go. This is completely mental exercise uh, to let go of your fear. Living your life blindly, you know, uh, going about your life without the best strategy, not really knowing where you're going. You know, it's interesting that I would do that every day anyways but when it, in, in, in an uncomfortable exercise then it, then all of a sudden it's like I, I'm realizing that I'm doing something blindly and it's completely uncomfortable it's unnerving it's fearful but it, honestly dude you've been doing that every day you know gravel castle I mean for me it's it's it teaches you a way to uh Look at yourself and look at your life and realize there's much room for improvement. A lot of the times when you're living your life, you're just, you might be just getting by. When I had to really take a hard look at my life, it was actually less than optimum. This whole COVID-19 thing was just absolutely destroyed uh, my business. I mean, my line of work. My industry is completely impacted by COVID. You know, there's uh, collateral damage that happens. You know, you end up with your house disorganized. You end up uh, getting into the whole hand drinking thing. You know, it's, uh, you know, everyone's just buying booze and drinking at home. Slightly depressed and uh, especially when your line of work is destroyed. A along with realizing there was much need for improvement, I, I also realized that I'm capable of doing much more than I ever thought I could. Yeah, I won't forget the day that he makes me hike up to Papago Mountain with a 40-pound vest on. I mean, we get out of the car, and I mean, I know that there's some sort of hiking that's going to be involved. <laughs> but this motherfucker pulls out a 40-pound vest, and he's like, he's smiling. He's like, okay, <laughs> you're, you're excited? And you're just kind of like, no, you're crazy. Next thing you know, I got a 40-pound vest on, and then we go into the base of Papago Mountain. We come to these Mayan-looking sort of steps, like something you see in a movie. And he tells me, well, we're going to go on a race. On a race? So I'm going to take some of the weights out, wear this 20-pound vest, and you're going to go up and down these steps 20 times. And then I'm going to go up without the vest 50 times. And um, so then you know, I had to put a wager on it. <laughs> of course, he makes the wager be like something that I absolutely hate, which is the cold. I hate cold weather and I hate water. He makes a wager that I have to get in the pool if I lost this race. I certainly didn't want to do that. After uh, about three, three times up and down steps, I was already exhausted. I'm like, there's no way I can even do 20. I started to tell myself that get prepared to get into the pool. It was so demanding of me that I, I just, I mentally told myself that, you know what, the pool might not be that bad. And somehow I found myself at a halfway mark. I got to 10. First he says to me, um, <laughs> we're not going home until one of us is finished. He still had a, a lot of up and down to do. And I was halfway through. So I'm just kind of like, well, what's the point in quitting? We're not going home until one of us finishes. He's not near done. So I might as well keep going. I said, you know what? Maybe I can beat him. I kept going. I went up to the top. I'm starting to feel that, that exhaustion again. I'm like going like, okay, I mean, this is, this is really hard. And he says to me, he says like, so man, you can do this. I don't know what happened. And I think the combination of what he said and the combination of that thinking that like, it's kind of like one of my favorite films, The Matrix. It's kind of like, you know that a lot of the stuff that happens in the, in the film, a lot of the stuff that Neil has to do is because he has to believe. You know, they tell him in the beginning of the movie or at some point in the movie that everybody that's faced an agent dies. Neil actually turns to face an agent. The agent Smith, he actually turns and faces him and he's willing to fight him. And everybody's like, what is he doing? And Morpheus says, he's starting to believe. I have to bring that up because that is exactly what happened. When I was on the top of those steps and he said, man, you, you can do this. And then I started to believe that, you know, I can do this. And then I tell you, I fucking did it, man. I did it, and I just, they call it a second win, but I applied the mental 
and I stop focusing on being done and focus on doing, taking step after step after step. And then next thing you know it, I made it to 20. And then he carried the 40 pound vest back home. You pushed me through. Somehow I got a second win, man. I didn't think I could do 10 more, but I did. How do you feel right now? I, I feel good that I even made the 20. I mean, race or not. Uh, I didn't think I, I could do it, but you know, I, I realized what this, this is what this is all about. You gotta stop telling yourself that you can't do something. This is the thing that's been tripping us up all our lives. I know, I know it has for me. Well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And I'm just like, it's time to get rid of that, that kind of thinking. What did you first tell me when I told you we're going to do 20 going up and down? I told you were crazy. And then what did you just do? I just did it without puking. <laughs> yeah, so if you're, if you're watching this video right now, I, you know, you know, I don't want to sound like a recruiter or anything like that, but, you know, do you have what it takes? Um... You know, a lot of people say that they do, you know. Um, I've heard people say, oh, yeah, I can do that. Oh, yeah, I've done that kind of thing or what have you. But, you know, have you really? I mean, would you really do this? Um, are, you, are you willing to take yourself into account? Are you willing to really look at yourself and willfully place yourself in a uncomfortable world of uncertainty, a situation that teaches you that there's a lot more to you or there can be a lot more to you than you ever thought possible. In one of the exercises that I, I did, I was required to write down four aspects of my life that I wanted to get rid of and literally throw them into a fire pit and watch them burn. And, you know, it's obviously symbolic but the funny thing about it is, is that I came up with six. I easily came up with six. I, cut, I, I could have come up with more. And, you know, this cleansing, so to speak, I almost didn't even really needed to be prodded into doing it. It just came naturally. These are the things that I need to get rid of and Gravel Castle, you know, this whole program helps you to get rid of the things that you need to get rid of and really start focusing on your life in a much more positive light and an efficient light. Much more efficient. We don't have time to waste. Um, no matter your age, we don't have time to waste. You know, we only have so much time on this earth. And you know, and not everything is physical. You know, there's a, there's there's a you know there's a um, almost spiritual element to it. You know, um, what he calls a you know more a, a state, your mental state or whatever. One one time I remember in particular, we went to a, a, a cemetery, and and he says to me, "We're going to do a bit of time travel. We're going to pretend as if you had thirty more minutes to live." And he asked me to write down, write something down to my parents. Or write something down to my daughter and write it as if I would perish in 30 minutes. And uh, it's a really interesting perspective that you come up with because, um, you know, what I wrote is it's, it's beyond poetic. I've been a journalist. I'm, you know, I am good with words. I'm a writer and this and any other. But what I wrote within those 30 minutes, it's the most from the heart passionate thing I've ever written. You know, it's, it's these kinds of exercises that really put things in perspective. You know, we're looking at um, we're looking at markers where people didn't even live overnight. It's just one singular date, June 26, 1996. And that means that this person didn't even live a day. And you think that all these people didn't have a chance to live their lives. But you were walking and talking and that's what Gravel Castle is about. It's time to start living. Because you have the chance to live. And so you need to live it to the fullest. Um, and realize that you have a greater potential that you didn't even realize. I'm feeling that there's a new me that's coming out of this. You know, a rebirth, if you will, or, or whatever you want to call it. Because we all have these people that we think we are. We have these people that we want to be, but there's a person that you can used to be. And I'm finding that, you know, these guys, as crazy as they are, it's like, you know, they're helping me to discover a new me and put a used to be behind me.
Oh, I can't, man. I can't, man. I can't. I can't. Move it, man. I can't. No. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't, man. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Oh. 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 Fuck. Now that was your limit, Patrick. You didn't even set a timer, did you? <laughs> I did, but I messed up. I set it for an hour and two minutes. <laughs> I meant to set it for two minutes. <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> Fuck you, man.